unknown pleasures and closer. And that's it. Everything else is merchandising. Merchandising of memory. We live in a, in a time where brands are everything. But Joy Division were beyond all that because you could simply trust what they were doing. Joy Division in particular, Factory in general, Ian's story is one of the last true stories in pop. There are very few true stories in a business-dominated pop culture. Yes, it's a fabulous story, the story of the rebuilding of a city that begins with them, the story of a tragic suicide, and a, a moral story, and a, a cultural, academic, intellectual, aesthetic story. But part of it is only here because they wrote great songs and great songs over time. in Los Angeles last week, we did this beautiful place where Zoom, Microsoft Zoom had hired and uh, it was absolutely gorgeous and they had all these girls walking and all these out of work actresses. <laughs> it was wonderful and they were giving, they were all walking around with little delicacies from the north like fish and chips and black pudding and you know, steak pies and stuff, little miniature things, giving them away. And I thought, oh this is fucking great this. And then I looked up and I caught sight of the documentary and it was is showing, you know, sulfur. And I went, oh. <laughs> I thought, fuck it, where's that? I thought, oh shit. That's where I came from. <laughs> the, the interesting thing about Tony Wilson, um, particularly in Manchester at the moment, is, is that it's one of those things where you never realise what you've got until it's gone. And when we did the Tony Wilson experience last week, uh, it was quite a shock, really, to, to realise how sadly missed he is because I think it's one of those things that when somebody is as influential and as down to earth and as humble as Tony was, uh, people, you know, take it for granted that he, he'll always be there. And I think Manchester is still struggling to cope with the fact that he's not there on a lot of levels. So that really frightened me. I mean, I was listening to, uh, <clears throat> I got the proof tape for the. Uh, New Order gig when we played the Joy Division set at the Cancer Benefit, which was last year, and I'd forgotten that Tony introduced us. And uh, six months later, he was he was dead. You know? it, it really is uh, a shocking thing, and uh, it, it does. It's not, you know. I spend a lot of my time talking about dead people. He's a fantastic individual. He took a small inheritance and invested it in local things, in local projects, um, very brave, and, and did things exactly to his taste, things that he was passionate about. And I don't think you'll find many people like that, and it was, you know, it was a wonderful, I'm really deeply happy that I made the documentary so other people could see something of him besides 24 Hour Party People, which is a fantastic film and accurate, but Tony's life played for laughs. <laughs> He's a very brave, very intelligent guy. You know, the band was surrounded by intelligent people, I don't know, articulate people. Um, Peter Saville, a fantastic and respected designer, and, and Tony, wonderfully articulate and brilliant man. I mean, what good fortune to have people like that in your life and, and to talk about subjects that, that you're passionate about. And uh, we filmed him twice. The last time you can see is he couldn't shave anymore because of the drugs he was taking. So he, he uh, you'll see him late at one point, fell a thick white beard, and it was about four months before he died. And Peter and I actually had a lunch with him shortly before he passed, and, and you know, really grateful to spend whatever time we could. Really. And he had never spoken to anyone on the phone. It took me six months on the internet to have a relationship with her. And then Grant and I showed up with a, a lighting guy, a sound guy, and I asked her to come to the hotel, and she bawled it. She, she wouldn't do it. I had to beg her to come over, and I just started talking to her. I just told Grant to fire it up as I was talking to her, and she's crying, you know. It, it's, those are, those are wonderful things. They only happen once. They'll only happen one time. And it's, uh, it's exciting. It really is exciting to get it. 
do you ever wonder where you would be right now if you hadn't gone to that game? Yeah. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, all the time, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it was the... It was the we, we, none of us knew each other, which was the odd thing, I suppose. I mean, I'd been following the career of the Sex Pistols just because I used to read the music papers because I was so bored at work. And I used to devour them and I'd, I'd noticed the little pictures that started appearing of them fighting their gigs. <laughs> that seemed to make more sense to me that that struggle and that physicality than go to see Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple. I thought, well, I can relate to that. You know, but you know, I was having a hard time relating to Jimmy Page and Robert Plant and stuff. So when the Sex Pistols came along, I could see it, you know. I thought, oh, God, yeah. It's like, well, it was, it was like somebody opened the door in a darkened room. I saw a way out. And that was it. Oh, shit, that's it. And it, it was quite an odd thing to do musically. I mean, when I, when I think about it now, because I'm a strong musician, I mean, why the hell would four people suddenly decide they were going to make music when they'd never made music before just because they'd seen a shit band? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that is fucking madness. And then that band then goes on to be Joy Division, you know, as influential as, as we, we've been, which is fantastic. It is absolutely that. That wasn't planned. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very difficult to, um, I still find watching this and watching Control each time I see it very difficult. Uh, because I think that one of the interesting things that, that we did as a group was that we threw ourselves headlong into New Order and didn't really face uh, what had happened personally or professionally. We just, you know, swept it. I mean, even I got shot when... I watched the documentary and realised that we hadn't played the Joy Division songs for 18 years. It was weird for me to see Bernard and Stephen talk about it because we've, we've never talked about it. So that was, really, that was quite odd for me. I had a few odd moments the last couple of years, haven't I? Um, when I write now, I, I don't say, oh, you know, let's sound like Joy Division or let's sound like New Order. You sort of surpass that, you can just do what you do really. And then people say, oh it sounds like Joy Division, oh it sounds like you want to so No, I don't, I mean it's, you know, I'm fucking glad I was in Joy Division. <laughs> 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 Otherwise I would have been comparing me to Joy Division. <laughs> 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 Many things, uh, long hair, being in a group, tattoos, she didn't speak to me for three weeks when I had my tattoos, I was 34. <laughs> <laughs> things like that. I remember, what was it, one, I remember going home one Sunday afternoon, this was, wasn't long before she died actually, and I was late for lunch, and she, went, she said, where have you been? And I went, oh, I've been for that, I was doing an interview, and she went, are you getting a real job at last? <laughs> I've only been doing it 30 years. <laughs> the interesting thing about the Joy Division brand, as in the, the, the t-shirts and stuff like that, is that we, we never did them as a group. We never did Joy Division t-shirts commercially. The only time we did them was when we were touring as New Order in 1989. And the t-shirt guy said, hey, you guys, why don't we do a Joy Division shirt? And we were like, what? <laughs> that was the first time we did a Joy Division shirt. <laughs> And the weirdest thing was when we got investigated by the taxman, because of the hacienda, when the factory went bankrupt, the taxman was sat there in his office in Manchester and he said to us, so I've been through all your accounts, he said, and I don't see any money for the Joy Division t shirts. And we said, We don't do it. He said, Well, I see them everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I see Joy Division t shirts. He said, And I'm finding you accordingly. We find us for not doing Joy Division teachers. <laughs> <laughs> but that'd be a lesson to you. Well, if they are, they're doing it without me, love. <laughs> <laughs> Split up a year ago. <laughs> Split up a year ago. <laughs>